Hey guys, welcome to That Pedal Show, Dan here. Mick here, hello. I was messing about with things there because I couldn't really hear the delay and that's because the... Ah, but that's the idea. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I was just interested. I was thinking it wasn't on. Okay. But the point is that it was on. And what was it, Dan? It was an always on pedal. <laughs> uh, okay, yes. Because today's show, as you have gathered from the title of the video, is about always on pedals. Mm hmm i like to be around with a plan, Dan. Yes, we've we've been planning. Yeah. Which, we've, been, we've been getting our thoughts to paper. It, every good thing that's happened on that pedal show to this point has been an entire accident. So it is with some trepidation that we actually start planning. Yeah. Anyway, that's what's going on. So um, it says, intro, say hello. Hello. <laughs> right. We... we we got some very nice comments on the last video, which was about how to choose an overdrive pedal to say how well structured it was. So we thought, ah, maybe there's something in this structure thing. Yeah, we, g we gave that a good, <laughs> well, because I was very nervous about that video, <laughs> as you well know. But anyway, we yeah. Yeah, 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 okay. So, okay. Uh, always on pedals. The idea of an always on pedal, we've all got, if you don't do it yourself, we all know people who have something on their board that they say, oh, I leave this on all the time, the best thing ever. So we want to have a look at the sort of pedals that you would have on your board for an always on thing, why you would have an always on pedal. Yeah. You know, what's their job, what's their function? That's a good place to begin because that was the thing I was trying, I've never done the always on thing. Right. So we were saying, well, why would you have an always on pedal? Mm -hmm. And my first answer was, you don't like the sound of your guitar amp. Okay. So it, a sort of, almost like a negative. So you're trying to change something that you're not really keen on. Sure. And then I think that becomes much more a positive story when you say you're trying to change it into something that just suits you a little better. Yeah. And trying to get something more consistent, I would say. Yeah. Um, what, what might those things be that you might want to change for the better or more consistency? They might be something to do with feel. Definitely. Uh, if you've got a, a, an amplifier that has got loads of headroom and one night you're playing a small 50 seated club and the next night you're playing in front of 3,000 people and the amount of volume that you can use on stage moves greatly yeah. and you want to keep some sort of consistent feel between what's going on with the amplifier. Well, you might you might have a, <laughs> a high watt custom 100 in a tiny room like this. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> might, might be the other thing that you might want to do with that. So, yeah, feel, EQ... EQ wise, absolutely. Um, having a, again, that comes down to the way that it interacts with the amplifier. If there's um, something that you're going to shape, also, also it can shape depending on the venue and that mm. sort of stuff. Um, uh, John Stockman, bass player from Carnival, um, I'm just reminded <laughs> that he has an EQ pedal right at the end of his pedal board. Yeah. And he just, like a master, he EQ. leaves the app and then yeah. and he just, shapes it for the room there's something in the fender the, the blessed fender hot rod deluxe that we love dearly that is this very particular mid frequency isn't there mm -hmm. and it's accentuated by the standard speaker that's in there so you might just want to calm that a bit or you might have yeah. an overdrive pedal that kind of does this thing that you just need to change a, a little bit um, and that's another thing we'll, we'll look at today is if you have your always always on pedal what happens when you put your other pedals on yeah absolutely so how does it interact with them um Dynamics we've kind of covered, haven't we? How it feels yeah. in terms of volume. Um, but yeah, so volume, mm -hmm. tone, mm -hmm. and dynamic. There you go. You might want to change one of those three fundamental elements of your sound always, yep. which is cheaper than buying five amps so you can just swap them out sure. each time. And then there's the other side of that, which is an effect. Yes. That is always on. Yeah. So, who, uh, who do we know? Like Matt Schofield Matt always Schofield. has a delay on. Yep. <laughs> I've tried to floor mount the horn to make it properly pedal like. Yeah. Great. Um, you might have an amp that doesn't have reverb. There you go. Always on reverb. Yeah. Etc. 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 Cool. Okay. So, let's. Shall we start with the buffer? Um, and the reason I say this is because. Uh, most people would situate this buffer right at the start of their signal chain. In fact, most buffers say, for the best results, have this as the first thing that you plug into. Yes. 
Um, so when we might when might we want to use a buffer? And yeah, we, on we've pedal? Uh, we've identified four main types of always on pedal. One is a buffer. Two is some sort of tone and EQ shaping. Three is gain and dynamics, and four is a specific effect. So we'll just go through them one by one. That's yeah. right. So let's but there might the be combinations then. like. It's not, they're not necessarily in one of those four camps. There might be combinations of all of those in, in the pedal. Yeah, but that's, well, the, uh, that's the idea. That does all of the above, doesn't it? it yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> For example. Yep, yep. So, okay, let's kick off with buffers and down. Buffers are much misunderstood. Yep. Um, briefly, what's a buffer? Okay, the buffer changes the output impedance uh, to a lower output impedance. What that does is it drives the capacitance and any loading in the, in the cables and the, anything that comes after it up to the point of the next buffer. So for example, uh, you might have 10 true bypass pedals and then putting a buffer at the front of that will drive all the patch cables and all the, the capacitance that's in that signal chain. However, um, if the third pedal in that signal chain is buffered, then that's going to be driving everything after that and you're only going to be driving things before the buffer. So for example, Boss pedals, um, Ibanez pedals, there's lots of pedals. Clons are a good example that in their bypass state are buffered, right? So they are already changing that impedance. But if you've got a big pedal board and with lots of pedals all chained in series and they're all true bypass, the fact of the matter is you're going to be losing some signal in that signal path. Yeah, if, so, you're, if you're in any doubt about that and you run a fairly big pedal board that doesn't have a true bypass switcher, just one day unplug from the front of your pedal board, plug straight into the amp and hear everything that you're losing mm -hmm. by going all the way through the pedal board. Yeah, and he, uh, a more a, a fairer example because if you just unplug from the input of your board and go straight to your amp, you might go, oh man, it sounds loads better. But it's also important that you also use the last cable because you've got to take into account it's not just this yes, cable, you've got two it's cables a cable from the board. Yeah, yeah. So just grab one true bypass pedal and plug both cables in, and then you're hearing the capacitance of just those cables in one switch. Mm. Then put it in your board, and then you'll hear what the board's doing. What you're, lo yep. what you're losing. There you go. Might, I, I'd say losing because you might want to lose it. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so what the buffer does is it, that loss that happens it drives all that capacitance and all that top end loss. It basically cures that. Um, so every single one of these pedals, mm -hmm. when it's turned on, is buffered, right? That's right. But ostensibly, if we're talking about a standalone buffer, we know this one is a buffer because it says buffer on the front. That's right. <laughs> but this is that as well, isn't it? The Taurus yep. is essentially a buffer. It's Yeah. It's... And we can talk about this Clover as having a foot in the buffered the buffer camp. Sure. Yeah, the, the Clover's the Clover's definitely a, a preamp EQ thing. But the thing is, um, okay. Let's start. Let, let's start. Right. The level set buffer for Fender. It's a really nice unit, this. It's it's really transparent. So basically, what I'll do is I'll get you to play. This is just, we're, we're using two amps today because we want to also show the effect of these into two very different amplifiers. So. The first amp uh, we have is the amazing 70s custom high watt 100 watt. 1973, hand signed by Harry Joyce. Yep. Just superb amplifier. The most unforgiving, loud, yep. hard to play amp we own. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So if we just have a listen to that on its top, if you wouldn't mind, please, sir. Sure. I don't know what the DB meter is saying, but it's not very loud. No. And it's a pretty flat sound. That's right. Deliberately so. Yep. The second amp is my old AC30, and I've got this attenuated so that we can, we've can we turned it up and the amp is compressing. Uh, it's losing a bit of that chime because it's not, yeah. you know, it's, the amp is basically caving in. So this is the AC30. But again, you know, right, right there. That's yeah, the completely different mid-range character. It's not attenuating much. It's only attenuating with whatever the natural level of attenuation is in the ox without it being attenuated. Yeah, but it is a, it's still a thing. Yeah, we found the next level down was just too, too much. much. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's those two. Uh, and so yeah, we want to, we want to experience these in these 
it, one out of five that's just you know really wide open and one out of five that is going to impart its own character onto anything. Yep. Okay, so the buffer. Uh, if we now turn the buffer on going into the high watt, so without the buffer. <laughs> So it's really transparent. That really is yep. transparent. Well, what this buffer has is this little high frequency control. It's really handy if you're doing things like changing guitars. So, um, you know, you're going to play your Strat for 60, 70% of the gig. But those couple of songs where you want to put a, a Les Paul or something that's perhaps not as bright, yep. to save you having to change the characteristic of the amplifier, you can just tweak that. Um, yeah, but the idea of that buffer is that uh, it would, if we were getting tone loss, which we're not, but if we were, it would drive all that and, you know, happy days. So let's have a listen to what happens if we put, now this buffer is going to be uh, right at the very start of the chain, okay? Let's turn on an overdrive pedal. So we've got the, the black box, which is uh, the... Snails from Snouse, which is a basically a remake of the Blues Breaker. So if we turn the buffer off, now this is again going into the high watt. Let's have a bit more overdrive, Dan. Okay, give some love. I think we set the sounds up with Dan's telly and uh, it's a bit more. Now that's without the buffer in front, and this is with the buffer in front. So a good buffer should do that. A good buffer should be transparent. It's, I tell you what, it's, I can't wait to hear the audio, as we always say, because the the, t the tone changed marginally. Yeah. There's a bit more gain. A yeah, a little bit more gain, a little bit more, tiny bit more sizzle. But the feel changed on the, on wow. the guitar. okay. Quite right. considerably, in right. fact. Just for that tiny, tiny, tiny change. Yeah. Can I hear it with the telly just for a sure. second? So interesting. It's very interesting. Now, the other thing about a buffer, I will say, is that at the moment we've got that right at the front. I personally prefer my buffers after my, at least after my drive section. Because it affects the overdrive. Exactly. And if you were using something like a vintage style fuzz or something that was very sensitive to a buffer, it mm -hmm. would fundamentally alter the sound of your fuzz. Correct. But one really great thing, so you get buffers that don't have any controls on them at all. They're just buffers, which is a one-to-one -one amplifier. Yeah. So same level goes in, same level comes out. It just changes the impedance. But the great thing about a buffer that has a level control is it's basically a master volume for your board. Mm. So imagine that that is... If it's at the end. If it's at the end. Yeah. Now, if you put it after your gain stages then you are you are changing the level going into the effects but if what if all that you're going to do is a slight change you might you might be um, doing a gig and another 50 people have walked in the room yep and you might just go okay, I just need to lift everything up a hair it's, it's a really good way to do it instead of turning back to the amplifier and you know trying to get that because the way the amplifier works, 
if you've got headroom in the amplifier, just the smallest change in that volume knob and you get this massive increase. Whereas here, I think you've got a better chance of fine tuning small increases or small decreases as you need them. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I like a buffer after the gain stages if that's what I'm going to use on. It is, to me, buffers have always been about practicality sure they've always Absolutely. been about a functional yep. thing so for example exactly as you said earlier sorting out the strength of the signal mm -hmm. keeping your high end intact through a bunch of pedals if you don't have a loop switcher yep so that's for me that's that would be the use of a buffer mm -hmm. but what we're also saying is it does have a tonal effect yes and therefore if you get one with a couple of tone controls on it you can use it as a tonal effect yeah absolutely so the the next interesting bit is probably what you're screaming at the screen now. Well, what's the difference then between something like the level set buffer and something that's more preamp in nature? Sure. So the preamp generally is it's it's an overdrive. Because there's an interesting marriage of the two in this Taurus yeah, thing. Yeah. And and it, in the in that, I don't actually know what the circuit is or how it works, but a lot of people always ask us about the BB Sonic maximizer. Yes. Is it the BB? Is that who makes yeah. it? It's yeah, yeah. Sonic Maximizer. Anyway, that pedal. And to me, this Taurus thing falls into that box. So it's not like an out-and-out -out preamp like the Benson. Sure. It has this kind of... Because to me, the buffer does that enhancing job. Mm -hmm. Whereas the preamp, I think, more of really is, is about gain structure more yep. than about... Yep, absolutely. Uh, an impedance change. Yeah. Yeah, and it still does that. Look, all of these pedals when they're on, yeah. there'll be an impedance change. The this reverb when it's on is a buffer at the end of the pedal board. Yeah. You know. We might have um, to introduce the always on reverb part of the way through. Both yeah. both Dan and I are <laughs> both struggle to play a completely dry sound. Can we do that now? Let's do that now. Okay. So again, you, so you heard how the, the feel changed by having the buffer in front. Mm. All right. What we're gonna do now is gonna turn the reverb on. So if you have swingage. So, Topanga Spring Reverb uh, from Catlin Bread. Obviously, it's a digital emulation of a spring reverb, but it sounds ace. Lots of people love this, which is yeah. why we've got it on the board. We've had so many requests to have the Topanga on, so here it is. Yeah. <laughs> now, what this is doing is buffering the signal, but it's very different. Now, the buffer's at the end of the board. Yeah. Have a listen to how the field changes. Here's what I'll do. I'm going to turn the reverb off. I'm going to turn the mix control down. Yeah. Okay? So, this is... I can just detect a tiny hair of extra presence and stuff on the top. Sure. Be fascinating to know if that comes out in the audio. Right. And that's what the buffer is doing at the end. But it's a different thing than buffering the input of the gain stage as opposed to the output of the gain stage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah but let's let's leave that on. Yes, please. <laughs> it just makes it easier. Yeah. <laughs> the, the one always on pedal that I would probably always use is reverb. It's definitely. It, it's always on in my amp. Yeah. So. Um, can we have a look at this Taurus thing? Because yes. I'm interested in this. So okay. this is there, are, but there are a bunch of pedals on the market that are definitely considered as always on pedals because mm -hmm. they are things like enhancers. Mm -hmm. And to me, that sounds like a glorified buffer with a bit of EQ and some some gain. So it's a, it's a That's preamp, exactly isn't it? That's exactly what it is. That's a preamp. Uh, if you think of things like the EP booster, um, the the Bad Bob boost, which is on my board, you know. Why haven't we included the EP booster, which is the most famous always-on pedal on everyone's pedal boards? 
Two reasons. The first reason is uh, I couldn't put my hands on it straight away. But the second reason is this is not about showing the individual pedals. It's just about the concept. And we can we can show the concept um, certainly with the Taurus. It's, the thing about this pedal is this pedal is going to impart its character mm. onto the signal path. EP Booster does the same thing. EP Booster does flip the phase. Yeah. Um, but the idea of the EP Booster, it's a preamp. Uh, it's modeled after tonally the preamp of the Echoplex. Yeah. Right? Uh, the, you know, the Taurus is another preamp and it has its own character as well. Let's have a look at the Taurus. Yeah. This is the servo. So, again, going into the high watt, I'm going to leave the reverb on. Yep. So there's a switch on there that says boost, and it adds a bit more gain to the circuit. It's, it's sort of subtle. It reminds me of the trick you would do in audio production. Just give it a bit more. Bit more, bit more volume, bit more bass, bit more, bit more kind of pinchy treble. Right. And it seems to, it seems to introduce a dynamic. There you go, and that's that's the big thing with these. With you know now we're talking really lovely, about getting actually. into gain stages, and we're talking about the change in dynamics. The thing with buffers. And uh, in sort of straight EQs, the dynamics don't really change. Yeah. But now we're talking about we're talking about gain stages. Yeah, yeah. You know, and we're talking about how that affects the dynamics. Yeah. You know. So I th for for me, if you were playing at low volume, mm -hmm. like at home, for example, or if you're doing you know gigs and as we all are, we're having to play less. Uh, we'll get onto this when we talk about, when we talk about the compressor, but I can instantly see that being really useful in a low volume environment because right. you just get a bit more feel. Yeah, have a go. See what you think. It's really nice. That difference in feel I and that know. front of the note. And it just It's almost like there's a bit of compression going on there. Yeah, I was going to say Companda or something. Yeah, yeah. Because it feels, it feels like a combination of a buffer and a compressor, even though, I mean, I don't know if it's doing any compression exactly as you just said, but that's what it feels yeah. like. It feels like a, uh, a dynamic improvement. And I'm pretty sure that's what the Sonic Maximizer does a similar sure. sort of thing, doesn't sure. it? I think. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool, actually. I can see. So anyone who doesn't want to change a fundamental amp tone mm. with um, an overdrive that's too heavily EQ'd or too much gain or any of those things, for those of you who love that, the, the sound of your amp, but you just want it a bit more yeah. in sharper focus, shall we say. Sure. But let's have a listen to that in the AC30. Cool. So the AC30 is uh, it's it's already compressing and doing stuff. <laughs> Read it on there. And because the amp is already compressing, we're getting much more effect from the reverb. Yep. Yep. So I'm going to turn that mix down a little bit. Okay, and let's turn that uh, that back on. Thank you. 
So that little bit of extra top and gain, it pushes through the yeah. compression in the outer fire. Uh, Southpaw 335, this is for you. You're saying, where's the 335? It's here. Very nice. It's just been in the case buried <laughs> over there, so getting it out is um, problematic. <laughs> You know when you've, your amp's too quiet, yeah, and it's really hard to play because it's too quiet. Yeah, that solves that problem. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's really interesting. It almost gives it like a big amp dynamic. Yeah, very cool. I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah. Okay, very so cool. we veered. But again, sorry, just, just to say, that's that's one version of that that preamp thing that has its own character. EP booster is another. There's a, there's a whole bunch of them. Yeah. You know, we, we obviously we can't try them all because we've got a lot to get through, but I and we've had the EP booster on the show before. Go to the go to the, to that pedal show that pedal show dot com and if you want to hear the EP booster in our videos, just type into the um the database and just type EP booster and it'll show all the videos where that appears. Yeah. But very similar sort of job. It's a it's a gain stage that has its own character and just comes down to whether you like that or not, whether you like the interaction of your guitar yeah. and that so the gain stage. Uh, lots of people really love the EP booster. The, the reason that I would veer away from the EP booster and towards something like the Benson preamp, for example, is because of the EQ control. Right, okay. So and now we're going to get to... Also the Clover. So yeah. we've, we've, we've kind of... We started with buffers. Yep. We've um, leapfrogged into buffers that are sort of preamps. Yep. And now we're into full-blown preamps. So now we're talking about less of a functional job mm -hmm. and more of a tonal job, would you say? Yeah. So it's having the ability to shape tonally what's going on. But still, we have to consider the, the character of these things and whether or not... Because we're talking about things that are going to be always on. We're not talking about an overdrive pedal that you kick on to boost the solo. Exactly that. You know, yeah. this is something that we're looking to enhance what we've got going on. Okay. So, um, if we ever think about about the high watt. Yeah, I want to enhance this because okay. set as it is currently, it's it's flat as a flat thing, flat person's Flatness. backside. There you go. Yeah. I'm trying to think of some something that has a flat backside without being offensive, so I won't. <laughs> Um, yeah, flatter than a two-dimensional... Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> so, as it is then, the high watt is kind of... It's, it's flat, isn't it? It's very flat. Let's try this. Pop your eyes out flat. Yeah. I mean, it's still a great sound, but it's just... Bink, right there. Yeah, there's yeah. very little dynamic, actually. So Obvi now, if you just... Obviously, I'm accentuating that, but... Sure, and now, but with the reverb, just the reverb on top of that sound... Easier. Yeah. 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 It's still it's still there, but there's there's yeah. there's something around the note now. Okay, let's have a look at the Benson. So the Benson preamp. Um, we first heard of Ben. Well, I first heard of Benson um, with the Andy. Andy. There you go, because he had one. Yeah, when Andy Martin came in. Yep. Oh, it's not very good on the floor, Dan. It's not. <laughs> there you go. And he had one. It sounded superb. Um, so yes, a Benson preamp. And this, this is a limited run of orange ones that you can get through, uh, definitely through Rift City Guitar, maybe through Andersons, I think through Andersons as okay. well. And uh, do you know what? I think it might even be Pedal Empire too. Oh, cool. Yeah. Very good. So limited that, That's handy. Yeah. I know. Imagine if they were all our exclusive preferred retailers. Imagine. Anyway, you can. You can get them there. So. Okay. So the idea with having a preamp like this as an always on pedal is that 
the character that we're talking about before with the servo, we want to impart a bit of that, but then have the option of shaping that the EQ. Okay, yep. so this is the way it's set up at the moment. Okay. So what I would be tempted to do, because at the moment that's that's too much, too much gain, too much gain. Yeah. So we're going to turn the gain down. Bearing in mind, we're talking about your always on core tone, not your kick on solo sound. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Because what we want to do is add an overdrive pedal onto this. Yeah. Afterwards, okay. So, so let's. So so if you pull the gain down a bit. Yep. Um, push the master a bit and see see where we are. See if it feels any different. Okay. <laughs> It's really lovely. I mean, it's a solid state pedal. Mm -hmm. There's no valve in there, but it reminds me entirely of just an extra gain stage, at, you know, in the front of your amp, just like the amps juiced a bit more. Let's try it with the telly. That is go the other way. Absolutely wonderful. So that feel that there's a tiny, tiny bit of like almost sponginess on the front of the note, but there's a clarity to it and it's, it becomes so much easier to play. Yeah. Now the great thing about that is I can then with that sort of character, uh, I actually, I want to see how that sounds going into the AC30. All right. So there's, so exactly the same thing, AC30. thing again it's pushing through that compression in the amp it's beautiful
see for me, if, seeing as we are talking about always on pedals, mm -hmm. the question at this point is, well, why don't you just use an overdrive pedal to do that? But that has a, such a subtle balance of gain and output, mm -hmm. plus you've got the EQ control that an overdrive pedal, a typical overdrive pedal, for example, a tube screamer would never be able to do that sure. because there's just too much radical EQ change. Sure. And, you know, line them up. Other, other overdrive pedals that sound fantastic as overdrive pedals but don't necessarily work great as your always-on thing mm -hmm. because it's just not kind of... It's too I, drastic. I, yeah, I don't want to use the word transparent, but yeah, that's, yeah. It's, that's it's what too, we're too going for. Too much drastic change. But exactly. That, I tell you, you know, you when you get to the... That awful thing when, you know, you, you arrive at the wedding gig or whatever function gig it is and the hall is massive and empty. Yep. And you play, and it literally, even if you're playing at one watt, all the kids have got their fingers in their ears and the old grannies are wishing they'd never booked a band. To take your amp down to anything that has any feel is quite tough at that point, just yep. to get that gain structure right. But I could see that really working, and I'd rather suspect other types of preamp as well, but you can just get it a bit spongy. Yeah, yeah. Now that's... Um Obviously, with this one, we have a master volume control, and yeah, so we can get obviously a lot more gain. I thought the high gain sound of that was ace. It was nice. So let's hear it with a three thirty five minute. That's interesting from the point of view that because the AC30 is already overdriving and compressing a little yep, bit, yep. it just makes it even chewier yep. and even kind of spongier. Mm -hmm. Loads and loads of character in that sound. Mm -hmm. But even into the clinically clean, flat sounding high watt, it still had a bit of chew yeah. on it. Yeah. No, nice. I mean, yeah, used, really more, great, really used great. more in the context of an overdrive pedal there. But anyway. Yeah. So again, where. You know, setting the EQ so it's not not drastically changing the sound of the amplifier. It's sort of you know tickling it a bit with a bit of the bottom, maybe a tiny bit more top end. Yeah. But we're not we're not fundamentally changing the sound. It's just having a little bit of character. The 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 that as we go into that game stage and just the way that it, it reacts and clips is just giving us a really lovely. Feel. Yeah, that's the other thing, isn't it? I mean, you'll notice that with the 335 into the Vox, I immediately turned the bass down. Yeah. Because there's a lot of bass coming out the guitar. It started, It was a bit flabby, so just tame that bass down a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. So if you were swapping between guitars, something, you know, a preamp like that with EQ on it, just just a tiny little tweak very quickly could, sure. could just sort you out. Yeah, um, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. That, now, if we just go back to having that with the low gain, just sort of yep. the... And so we'll just show you what happened. Okay, so we're going to add the black box now on top of that. the black box before the Benson? No, the black box is after. I was going to say, yeah, I would expect it to have been much drivier than that if it was, if yeah. it was before. Yeah, that, yeah, that's right. So what we're, what we're doing, we, we're having this early on, 
is going to impart that character on everything else yeah. down the chain. And we want that character to go into the overdrive pedal as opposed to the other way around. Yes. You know what I mean? Otherwise, it's just we're going to be hitting that with too much yeah. gain. Yeah. But that, there's a slight mid-range thing. And where we are, um, it's, that, it's that top end to it. And it just it sort of pushes through. The way it pushes through on the AC30, it does exactly the same job with the overdrive pedal. Yep. So by, by the overdrive pedal by itself. Sounds pretty glorious without the preamp, to be fair. It's yeah, look, it, it's wonderful. But yeah. that, I Which love you, we're into gain stacking now. Exactly, aren't we? exactly, yeah. exactly. So let's move along here. So we've we've got, you know, using the Benson preamp as an always on thing, you know, sort of low gain, it's just sort of tickling the EQ. Let's look at something now. This is the JHS Clover. Now, this is a, basically a remake of the FA1, the famous uh FET um the boss thing. The boss FET belt pack um, booster. There are a number of guitar players that used it. Most famously was the Edge. Okay. Um, Dave. He, David G? Dave Evans. Dave Evans? Is the Edge's oh, name. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. No, I can't honk him. Can can half honk Davy G. Okay. Yeah. I've been on his barge. That's not a honk. No. <laughs> it's a... Um, it's a ding of the bell. Yeah. The barge. That's all I get. It's Maybe we should have a triangle for a sort of... Anyway, it doesn't matter. A half assed attempt at... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. For anyone who doesn't know what the name drop horn is about, it's about if Dan and I mention somebody who we know or have met, and it started to get embarrassing. So we thought we would mark the embarrassment with a honk. There you go. So, for example, when Dan says, hey, I was hanging out with Ed O'Brien, <laughs> that occasion needs to be marked, just for any new people who don't know what that means. Great. Right. Um, okay, yes, yeah, so the, the JHS Clover, it is a, it's in, heavily inspired by, shall we say, the FA1. It has a couple of uh, big differences, though. It has, so the FA1 has uh, bass and treble. This only, this has bass, middle and treble, but you have the option of bypassing the EQ altogether, going to the original bass and treble, or having full EQ with the mids. Um, no, there's no master volume on here, so it's just volume and EQ. But again, there's something about the design of this preamp that it imparts its own thing, and a lot of people were using that as an you know as their always on thing because it just sounded ace. And particularly into something like an AC30, I would imagine, because it just enabled it to get it into that zone a little bit quicker. So if we, let's let's have a look at the AC30 because you can hear at the moment. The AC30 is, is struggling, right? It's it's turned up, it's compressing, and it's very little headroom there. I mean, it's it that on the edge sound sounds great, but kind of hard yep. to sort of push forward from here. So. Uh... I love that. I rather suspect the results into the high watt will be quite different. Should, Let's do, yeah, should we yeah. just try that? Yeah, so. yeah. Go on then. That's 
So this feels a lot faster. It feels a lot less compressed. Than the Benson? Than the Benson. Yeah. Um, but this, being able to shape the EQ based on travel. So we've turned the bass down a little bit. If we just, with the flat, uh, flat top end, again, going back into the, uh, the AC30. Up factor as well. Yeah. Cleanup factor is really interesting. We'll, we'll talk about this more when we get onto compression in a minute. But if you play, as I do a lot, a strat, mm -hmm. and after many, many years of using a strat, I've kind of got used to the fact that when you turn the volume down, you lose a lot of high end. Right. Because that's the kind of music I play, and that, that sort of works. But if you don't want that, and you don't want to go for a um, treble, bleed. treble bleed circuit in the guitar, mm -hmm. Something like this can really help because as we just proved with the telly, it retains quite a lot of top end mm -hmm. because of the buffer in the pedal, right? Yep. So um, I wonder if that will work with the old Strat. So if I just play without the, um, clo without the Clover for a second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely does, and then I would just do a bit of that, bit of that, bit of that. Actually, where is the mid control? So if you're using a lot of those clean sounds, two and four, and you want that sparkly top end, man, an always on preamp buffer, yeah, almost, almost essential, depending on what kind of what what kind of amp you're running, but you'd miss it if yeah. it wasn't there. Yeah, and you know if you, <laughs> um, let's say you've got an amp that's a little bit dark sounding, mm. and you want that lovely fendery, too rocky thing this is a way to step towards that without having to go without having to buy one of those sure one of those things yeah. It's beautiful. Now I've got this further on in the chain because this has a huge amount of headroom, okay? Um, and let's hit that with the black box. <laughs> What I like about that mm -hmm. is it sounds like an amp that's really working. Right. And it feels like an amp that's really working. Mm. And if there's one use for an always on type pedal, for me, that would be it. Sure. To get a bit more dynamic going. Yeah. 
and be able to have the uh, lower volume. Yeah, and having the amps sort of wide open, doing what they do. If you need more volume, less volume. There you go, master volume. But yeah, for, yeah, yeah. for changing the dynamics and the feel, it comes to that always on pedal. Very nice indeed. That's great. Yep, really cool. Okay, well, seeing as we're talking about dynamics, then is it time to talk about compression? Yes, it is. There's a a, a lot of people, certainly a percentage of people, um, a high percentage of people who are using always on pedals are using an always on compressor. And it's really interesting. Um, the If you think about what an amplifier is doing when it's turned up, it is limiting. Uh, and you know it's it's compressing. So the um, well, I should say it's limiting, doing a very similar job. The the compressor will sort of mimic that feel. Uh, lots of people use compressors in the effects loop of the amplifier, trying to get a bit more of that you know feel from the the preamp stage. Um, but this is a you know one of the most popular always on pedals, the compressor, yeah, and particularly this one. So this is the new stacked edition Cali seventy six. I just had to double check there, but I hadn't realised that the old Cali seventy six was only one yes. eleven seventy six. Yep. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, the eleven seventy six was a universal audio limiting amplifier, mm -hmm. a very very famous compressor that uh, finds its way into this Origin FX pedal. Firstly in the Cali 76, the big one, mm -hmm. then in the Compact, then in the Compact Deluxe, and now in this one, which is two of them stacked together. Is that right? Perfect. And two of them stacked together was famously used by Lowell George, who I wish I could honk, but I can't. Um, and if Joey Landreth was here, he would be able to show us what that sounded like. But that glorious, amazing, syrupy, sustain mm -hmm. thing that, mm -hmm. that Lowell George had. Yep. So I think slide players would like it a lot, which is uh, incidentally why the slide rig is two compressors stacked. Sure. Now, one of the things why compressors have become synonymous with an always-on pedal is this control here, the dry control. Uh, lots of compressors nowadays give you the ability to mix in your direct signal with the compressed signal. Yep. So, uh, what does that look like? If you play for us for a second, sure. I'm going to the high watt. Yeah. I'm going to turn the dry signal off and just have the compressed signal okay. out. So high watt by itself. Okay, so that was the difference between the normal signal and the compressed signal. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix in the dry signal on top of that. You hear how the front of the notes being sort of... You, you just completely lose it. Exactly. Which is which is a thing, you know, if you, if you if you want that is a thing. Yep. Now I'm going to turn the, mix the dry signal in. Dry signal in. Come on now. It is a godsend for strap players, isn't it? If, if you like that, if you if you want that sustained thing, you know. Is that can you do the can you do the position two and four thing? Yeah, I just that was two. That was two, okay. Yeah, but here's his position four.
it's very nice. And I think what you're saying is the, the if you use compression as an effect and you just turn that dry signal off mm -hmm. and you want it for a choppy kind of, you know. If you want it for that effect, mm -hmm. that's the compression sound, isn't it? Yep. But that becomes quite difficult if you've if you've got overdrive. Have we got any overdrive before it at all? Uh, where are we? Yes, we do. Let's try with the DNM drive. Yeah. Okay. So. It's very good, but you see that um, you're liking it. All other compressors that I play that aren't Origin compressors mm -hmm. seem to just take away a dynamic that I don't want taken away. Right. That gives me a dynamic that I want back. Wow. At a low at a low volume. Sure. Yeah. And I guess that's why guys like Chris Buck, you know, if you want to talk about always on pedals, mm. on his pedal board, uh, his Klon-type pedal, that and the EP boost are always, always on. on. Yeah. yeah. Because it gives him that dynamic. Yeah. Because he's another guy that has to be very careful with his on-stage volume. volume. Yeah, yeah. So you just need so it. So, he, yes, he's using that to give that sense of feel back. So that's another thing. We're talking about the um, the character of the the preamps and that the compressor is exactly the same thing. It's it's the overdrive for your clean sound. It's giving that <laughs> it's giving that that character um, and that sense of you know that sense of feel without fundamentally changing everything. Yeah. You yeah. know. Have, so, a go, have a go on that just for a second. I, I want to know what you think. Okay. <laughs> Do you know what these controls do? Yes. Yeah, so this is the uh, this is the attack controls for for both of the compressors. Yeah. So all the way clockwise is fast attack slow, slow decay. Yeah. Then all the way to the right is slow uh, slow attack fast decay. Okay. Could you just give me a, give me a quick uh, squeeze on that? Yep. Give us, give us a quick play.
great. They also um, amplify all of your noise. Compressor. That's right. That, that's right. Yep. <laughs> Which might be one downside of uh, having it as an always on thing. Yeah. I think the idea, though, with the, the always on thing is that the compression is set quite low. Yeah, you wouldn't have it as... You wouldn't I, have it as like the effect. I was doing it extreme because I wanted to hear the compressor. Sure. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, the always on thing, compression set quite low, but it just gives you back a little bit of that feel. But nice. yeah, it's yeah, really, really great. Really great. Why don't we finish off then with... Um, let's pick a couple of these. Mm -hmm. I'd say we must use the compressor. <laughs> yep. We must use one of the preamps. Okay. And reverb, reverb and delay. Yeah. Well, yeah. So the delay is is a really interesting one. Um, you know, people are saying, why on earth would you use a delay as an always on thing? Um, we we had uh, Matt Schofield in. He was, he was he was telling us about how he uses his delays, how he always has a delay on. It's either a short delay or a long delay. Robin Ford, same thing. Pretty much always, you know, isn't it? Always on. Yeah. Uh, what it does, and you can be really subtle about it, but it just gives, again, a sense of depth yep. to the sound. Okay, so if you, I'll turn the reverb off for a second so we can just hear yeah, the delay. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, um, so choose your. Thanks for the warning. No worries. Choose your. Um, I want to set up a sound yep. that's got um, maybe a bit of this. Yep. And a bit of this. Okay. So we'll go Benson. Yep. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the delay on. I'm going to shorten the delay time, shorten the repeats, and bring the effect level down. Okay, to where it's almost imperceivable. Yep. Okay, so I'll start with having quite loud and quite, you know, quite a long delay time. So you can hear how, even though by itself you can hear the delay, but you can hear how in a mix you might not really pick that out. In the truest sense of the always on pedal, it's horrible when you turn it off. There you go. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Have a go on that.
Um, for those of you, uh, I, m- I might remember to put the um, captions in because I'm editing this week's show, but that was both amps at the end. I turned on, um, as you will see on the board, the comp, the Benson, the delay, the Topanga, and then we added in the DNM on top for a bit of fun at the end. Yeah. I love I loved that. I love that delay. Just yeah. that tiny, tiny little bit of delay. Yeah, yeah. The, the difference that makes is massive. Actually, even more than the reverb. Yeah. Well, it's it's almost doing a reverb it's job, isn't sim- it? Yeah, similar. It, or, yeah. I mean, it's not. It's delay, yeah. but uh, yes. All right. Okay, that's really interesting. Um, always on pedals, then. Hmm. So whether you are a high gain player and you have your 5150 or your rectifier or your diesel or whatever and you bang a tube screamer in the front to make it that high gain Mm -hmm. sound which we haven't covered today because that's not really our thing that's one thing as you're always on pedal Mm -hmm. secondly what we've really discussed today is taking a pretty flat sounding amp yep and augmenting it with something that you leave on all the time or combinations of things that you leave on all the time which is not possible logically I know (laughs) <laughs> because then they wouldn't be on all the time. <laughs> but we've shown you a few combinations of things, which I think the biggest advantage of doing this today, mm. for me, has been about introducing some dynamics to a flat sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I'm going to think really carefully about, now that we've all got to play a bit quieter, mm. a little bit of preamp and a little bit of compression mm. into what is otherwise a fairly flat-sounding amp. Yeah. Yeah because you don't have the benefit of volume and power to give you that what the amp's doing when it's turned up yeah yeah that yeah that's an eye opener for me it, yeah it's the difference it makes to just the amount that you feel connected and how like fun yeah. it is you know the the um well especially the Cali the the Cali 76 stacked mm. and definitely the Taurus thing yeah Sorry, I forget what it's called. This um, servo. The servo, the Taurus servo. Those were, those were the two things to me today that gave the most of that. Okay. And then these two, just oh. adding a bit of character yep. and gain structure. Yeah, the Benson, man. It's cool. Oh, so. This, so though, cool. as well. The, oh, <laughs> yeah, no question. It's very, yeah. Great. Great. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Did we conclude anything? Um, that uh, pedals are awesome and you should get more. Um, well, but you can see why if you've got an amplifier that has loads of headroom, like this isn't loud. Yeah. You know, we've got this 10, look, you know, look where, the, where the master is. Um, for those of you at the back, it's literally on about there, on about half eight, of half. less than 8 a.m. Yeah. But if we can get that sort of sound... Yeah. into a, a high watt that's hardly even on. Yeah. That's the advantage. Yep. So totally. now we go to a, we go to a, a massive gig and we can we can turn the amp up. Well we can get that sound but just louder. Yeah, or yeah. you know, we're not we're not dependent on the amp working so hard. Yep. You know. Uh yeah. Wonderful. Very cool. Very cool. There you go, guys. I really hope you enjoyed that. Um, I, I certainly did. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed yourself a T-shirt or beanies or strings or DNM drives. Um, Journals, pencils, all that coasters. Stuff. Uh, yeah, thanks for doing that because that's what keeps the show going. So, um, yeah. Yeah, really appreciate it. Massive thank you to our preferred retailers. Uh, in the UK and Europe is Anatons of Guildford, Surrey. Uh, in Australia is... Stealing my lines, man. Um, it would be Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. And in the US of A... Would be Rift City Guitar of uh, various loci. Yes. Uh, and finally... Patrons. Our patrons. Guys, um, couldn't do it without you. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, it really means the world to us. Have a fantastic week, and we will see you soon. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>